Yeah. 
yes, we will sing and shout for victory. Scripture will be taken from Romans chapter 5, started at verse 1 through verse 21, we'll read together. The last verse, 21, we'll read together. And we'll do it alternately. Praise God. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the Lord our God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience, and experience hope. And hope make it not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet free adventure for a good man, same would even dare to die. For God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, how much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, had abundant unto abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came by all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. 21 together. That, that as sin, sin had reigned unto death, death even so might grace, grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life. Of Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise the 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 Lord
praise the Lord. May the Lord add his richest blessing to the reading of his holy words. Praise God. Give the honor to God, to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the blessed Holy Spirit, to Pastor Gordon, Pastor Brown, Pastor Police, to the deacons and each and every one in the house of God this morning. I give God thanks for being in his house one more time. At this time, I give the handover to Pastor Police. Come on and put those hands together and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Come on and shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and shout, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The choir is coming with incredible God deserve. Incredible praise. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are worshiping the most high. Praise the name of the Lord. What kind of God? He's a miracle working God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I've had some problems, some great and some small. You being God delivered me from them all still can't believe all the ways you pay oh Lord an incredible Oh, wait. 
Lord, we bless you. He's incredible. He's incredible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. He's incredible. He's incredible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. He's incredible. He's incredible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.6, we're going to be reading from verse 5 down to verse 14. St. John chapter 6. When you find it, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And when Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence 
shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now, when there was, now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fish, as many as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. And those, then those men which, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. Praise God. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading of his holy word. You may be seated in the house of God this morning. It is such a wonderful privilege this morning to be in the land of the living, to be in the house of God, to be giving here giving God praise and glory for all that he has done. I'm truly, truly, truly blessed this morning to be a part of the family of God, to be a to be an ear of God, and to be a joint heir with Christ Jesus. We honor him today. We honor our pastors and, of course, their spouses. And I honor my wife. And I honor the people of God this morning. In whatever capacity you are here, we thank God for you. We thank God for the musicians. We thank God for the, the praise team. And it is just such a wonderful day. Another Lord's Day. And we, uh, we have the Lord's Supper with us. And so that makes it even a more special day because it's a day when we remember what Jesus did on the cross. But this morning, I want to talk to us about the abundance of bread. The abundance of bread. And this morning, as we look at the text before us, we see Jesus performing another miracle. We live in a society today where people no longer believe in miracles. People believe that our God no longer works miracles. But I'm here to tell you that he is still the miracle worker. God, our God, is an incredible God. And the word incredible means unbelievable. And what God does for us, it's unbelievable because it is unexplainable. And that's really what a miracle is. And I'm so glad that he is still working miracles because I am a walking miracle this morning. Come on and give God praise. Come on, somebody. You are a walking miracle this morning. And we ought to give God thanks. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, hallelujah. My soul cry out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. And so this morning we are so blessed. We are blessed to be a part of the family of God. A miracle is a supernatural occurrence. A miracle is something that man cannot explain with logical arguments, but it is beyond our understanding. God has been working miracles from the time man was created. As a matter of fact, the earth, hallelujah, was created miraculously. Because he spoke the word and everything came into existence. If you want to doubt miracle, you ask Brother Joshua. When, they, when he was battling the five kings of the Amorites. And he asked God, he said, God, I want you, hallelujah, to give us some more time. And God allowed the sun to stand still. And the Bible tells us that there has never been another day since that day 
where God allowed the sun to stand still in the sky. That's the kind of God that we are serving. He defies nature. He defies gravity. He defies philosophy. He defies science. He tears down religious barriers. Our God is a miraculous God. In the book of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, the apostle Paul says, No unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask. Or not only ask, but even think according to the power that worketh in us. So our God is a miracle working God. So we get into the book of St. John and we know that John, hallelujah, was that disciple that laid on the breast of Jesus. It is John who spoke more profoundly about the deity of Christ. It is John who declared in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And in the 14th verse he said the word became flesh and dwell among us. And so John establishes the deity of Christ. John tells us in his record, John records seven miracles. Seven miracles that Jesus did. It, didn't, it doesn't mean that he only performed seven miracles. But John recorded under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, seven miracles. Hallelujah. The first miracle is recorded in John chapter 2, 1 to 11, where our Savior turned water into wine. We read, hallelujah, in St. John 4 from verses 46 down to 54, where Jesus healed an official son. I'm talking about the man of Galilee. Somebody say, I love that man. That man from Galilee. Hallelujah. For he has done so many things for me. The third miracle that John records in, in St. John 5 from verses 1 to 18 he healed an invalid at the pool of Bethesda. We're talking about Jesus. Miracle number four was when he fed 5,000. 5,000 in Galilee. Hallelujah. Miracle number six was when he walked on water. Talking about the man who defied gravity. It is not possible for you and I to walk on water. But you see what is possible, what is impossible with man. It is impossible. Oh, hallelujah. What man cannot do, God can do above what we can imagine. That's the God we're talking about. And if you remember clearly, Peter said, if it is you, Lord, bid me to come. And of course, Peter, hallelujah, started to walk on water. Which means that the God that we're serving, if our eyes are fixed on him, there is nothing too hard for God to do. But we have to learn to trust him. Hallelujah. Miracle number six in John 9 verses 1 to 7. He healed the man that was born blind. And then when we come to, to miracle number seven. That's the miracle of miracles. Where he called Lazarus from the dead. And it's interesting how there are many men in the Old Testament. And many times even Jesus in the New Testament. When he called men where their spirit left their body back to life. But you see Lazarus was a unique experience. Because Lazarus was dead for four days. You see after four days hallelujah the heart stopped beating. After four days the blood has coagulated in the vessels. After four days hallelujah necrosis begins to take place. But Jesus who says I am the resurrection and I am the life. He says, show me where you lay him. It's not that he didn't know where Lazarus was. Because he knows everything. But he was building up faith, hallelujah, in the disciples. He said, show me where you lay him. And he went there and he called him by name. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And the record declares that the dead man came walking. He said, loose him and let him go. And so today, we are living in a time where God is still working miracles. And I want you to know today that Jesus, 
Jesus. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But just like he said to Martha, he said, Martha, do you believe? Do you believe? Because if you don't believe, you are in trouble. The word of God says for us to be saved, we have to believe. We have to believe that he is who he says he is. We have to believe that he is the miracle worker. He is the God that can change our circumstances. He will turn our darkness into light. He will turn our night into day. He will turn things around because he is faithful. He is faithful. And so we read, hallelujah, as John begins to complete his gospel writing. John tells us in the 20th chapter and the 30th verse, John reminds us, he says, listen, many other signs. St. John 20 and verse 30, he says, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Which book? This gospel, the gospel of John. He says, he says, but these are written. What these? These miracles, these works of Christ, they are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. And so whatever he did, he's working on our faith, on our belief in him. There are many today who don't believe in him. But the word of God says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, be oh hallelujah, you've got to believe that Jesus is the Christ. You've got to believe that he is who he says he is. Going to church alone will not do it. You've got to have faith in God. You've got to believe that he is the miracle worker. He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You have to believe him for yourself because God is looking for believers. Hallelujah. Today we have many Christians, but not many believers. Hallelujah. But a true Christian is a true believer. The apostle Paul says, I am persuaded. When you're a believer, you are persuaded. You are convinced in your mind that there is no other power. There is no other name. There is no other savior than Jesus Christ and him alone. It is not Jesus Christ and, but it is Jesus and Jesus alone. It is he alone. Hallelujah. But these things are written. That you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Not a Christ, but the Christ. Hallelujah. The Son of God. And that believing you might have life through his name. Church, you have to believe. You have to believe. And believe is more than just the mental acceptance. But belief will cause you to act according to what your mind is convinced about. If you are convinced that Jesus is the Christ, then you've got to serve him. If you are convinced that he's your savior, then you've got to trust him. If you are convinced that the, your, your victory is in him, then you've got to walk by faith. You've got to walk in obedience. You've got to learn to take God at his word. You can't depend on the government because the government will fail. You can't even depend on your pastor because pastors will fail. Oh, but Jesus, he never fails. Hallelujah. Jesus never fails. Hallelujah. Oh, whatever he says, he means it. The disciple says, I believe that you are the Christ. You are the Christ. And we have to have that belief. Amen. In St. John 20 and verse 29, after Thomas saw the risen Savior, Thomas said, unless I put my hands in his side, unless I touch the wound. And Jesus, when he came into the upper room, he said, Thomas, come and touch me. And Thomas said, because, and of course, Thomas, when Thomas touched him, Thomas said, Lord, I believe. And Jesus said, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But he says, blessed are those who have not seen, but yet have believed. 
And so today God is looking for believers. Amen. Believers. People who will hang their lives on what they believe. Hang their faith on what they believe. Despite the current circumstances. Despite the outlook that stands before us. Despite the prognosis. Despite the diagnosis. And I believe what God says. If God says I'm going to live, live I shall. Live I must. Live I will. Because I believe what God says. Amen. In St. John chapter 21 and verse 25. Jesus, uh, John wrote. He says, and there are many, also many other things. Many other things which Jesus did. The which, if they, could, if they should be written to everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. So what he wrote, what John recorded, is only a sketch. It is just enough for us to believe that he is who he says he is. Amen. And that was just the introduction. And so as we look at our text this morning, we find that Jesus, he is the miracle worker. And we're looking at miracle number four, where he fed 5,000. And if you have been around the church long enough, if you were ever attending Sunday school, you would know about the feeding of the 5,000. Because from the time we were children, we were taught this story. This story, hallelujah, is not one of those stories that you could tamper with. This miracle was a huge miracle. I say a huge miracle because it involved a large number of people. And so it's very hard for this miracle to be discredited because there were many eyewitnesses. It involved over, Lord, the Bible says 5,000. But John was very clear in his statement to say that there were 5,000 men. I don't believe that there were only men at this miracle, because you know the women always tend to outnumber the men. Amen. And then you have children. So if we were to put a number on this group, we could easily say this crowd was over 25,000. But I want you to understand, we're going to stick to what the Bible says, and it says there were 5,000 men. Are you with me? And this miracle, like I said, was a miracle that involved a large number of people. There are miracles that were recorded in the Gospels, and there are four Gospels. And there are some miracles that are recorded once, some twice, some three times, and some four times. Well, this miracle was recorded in all four Gospels, which tells you that because of the magnitude of this miracle, all the disciples wrote about it. They wrote about it because of its significance and the message that was being brought across by this particular miracle. Now, I want you to understand something, that Jesus doesn't need a crowd to work a miracle. Hallelujah. He is not about establishing a church. He's not looking for crowd. But he, he said he came to do the will of, this, of his father. Jesus wasn't about making money. Oh, hallelujah. This ministry that he started, it wasn't about generating money. But it was about saving souls. It was about delivering people who were under bondage. You see, there are some miracles that Jesus worked that were transforming miracles. There were some where people's lives were transformed. There were some miracles where there were healing miracles. There were some miracles, glory to God, where there were creative miracles. By that I mean that he literally created new stuff. And so when you look at this miracle... And you see the compassion that Jesus has. It really shows you that he is the God of compassion. And the Bible said, and as we look at this text, we understand the love that Jesus has for us. 
the love, the compassion. And even when we were not faithful to him, he still loves us. You see, the crowd was not following him because they really wanted to follow him. But the Bible tells us that they were following him for the excitement of the miracle. They were, they were following him because they were enamored. They never saw such things before. And so there was a sense of excitement. And so even this, you know, this crowd was large, it was a fickle crowd. They were there because of what they could obtain. But Jesus, nonetheless, decided to show his amazing power. He decided to show man just who he is. I am the bread of life. And I want you to know that before every miracle that Jesus does, or after every miracle, there is a lesson to be taught. He speaks the miracle, he does the miracle, and then he teaches the lesson. And so we look and we see him here that there was a crowd. And the first thing we look at is the crowd that was with him. It was a huge crowd. It was a huge crowd because verse 4 tells us that the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. And so there were a lot of people there. They were there because they were at a feast. Jesus chose this time to perform this miracle because he wanted people to understand who he is. And so he looked and he saw the great company. And of course, we look at the unbelieving disciples. And he looked at Philip. And I want you to understand something. That at this time, these guys, their faith should have been elevated in Christ. There should be no doubt about the power that he possessed. But we see them here still doubting what he can do. And we see them here doubting the power that he has. And the Bible said, hallelujah, when he saw the great company, he said unto Philip, when shall we buy bread? Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? One, the location was not somewhere where they could run to buy bread. There was no bakery next door. There were no publics around. There was no Trader Joe's. Walmart was not in existence. But they were at a point where there was no bread. So Jesus chose this time to show that he is God. I want you to understand that when we go through our struggles, it is not the times when we are on, on Mount Everest, hallelujah, that we really dig into God, but it's those times when we are down and out. And, and all the answers seem to be missing at that time. Then God shows up. It is when we are weak that he becomes strong. So he said unto Philip, where shall we buy bread? And the Bible tells us this he said to prove to him. For he, you see, to prove to, that he himself, because he knew what he was about to do. Jesus was about to work a miracle. But you see, he was challenging Philip. Is it possible that what you're going through this morning, God is challenging your faith? God wants you to see where your faith is standing. You see, God knows what you're experiencing, but he allows trials to come for you to see where you are. Because sometimes we feel like we are so strong. Oh, but then a little wind blows and we realize just how vulnerable we are. Oh, we're, we, we're ready to pray for other people. We're ready to lay hands on the sick. But when a little sickness hits our body, then we begin to change our outlook. But I want you to know that God will challenge our faith for us to see where we are. To see how we stand. Am I that strong in God? Hallelujah. Sometimes God will allow the enemy to afflict you. To show you just who he is. Am I talking to the church? You see, hallelujah. If I can go back to my brother Peter. You see, Peter was the one who told Jesus. He said, Jesus, if it is death, I'm going to die with you. Jesus said, I'm going to Jerusalem to die. Peter said, Lord, I'm right there with you. Peter said, Jesus said, Peter, you be quiet. You be quiet because the rooster is going to crow. 
And when the rooster crow, at three times, you're going to deny me. As a matter of fact, Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, Satan desire to sift you as wheat. Oh, glory. But I have prayed for you. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Well, let me tell you something. Jesus allowed Satan to sift Peter. Oh, hallelujah. He will allow the enemy to afflict you and to afflict your families because God wants you to understand that your victory is not in your strengths, but your deliverance is in God. Hallelujah. And you look at Peter after Jesus prayed for him. Look at Peter after those three denials. Look at Peter after he told the woman and he told the men, I don't know the man. Look at Peter under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Look at Peter on the day of Pentecost. You would think glory to God. You would think glory to God that when he did betrayed or denied his master that it was over. Satan will believe and will tell you that the race is over. But I'm here to tell you that when you turn it over to Jesus, he's going to turn things around. Oh, hallelujah. That's the God that we're serving. That's the God that we're serving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have to understand that when you're a child of God, your life belongs to him. Oh, God. It's no longer yours. You got to turn everything over to Jesus and allow him to accomplish his purpose in our lives. And so the Bible said that Jesus began to challenge Philip's faith. And Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little, take a bite. So one, there was no bread available. Number two, they didn't have the money. Are you with me? You see, 200 penny worth, work with me now, 200 denarii, one denarius, is a day wage for a Roman soldier. One denarius. Yeah? And one denarius is equivalent to a penny. So if you have 200, that's about 80 days worth of work. Do the math. But not even that is enough to buy bread for everybody to get a bite. Not even a, a full stomach, but just a bite. An incredible God deserves an incredible praise. Watch God work his miracle. And so the Bible said one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, another unbeliever. <laughs> now, Jesus, somebody said, Lord, in order for you to work, we got to have some faithful folks around. Amen. And yes, for you and I, it's very important. But for Jesus, it doesn't matter who is in the crowd. There are times when he would send the crowd out. There are times when he would let the crowd stay because he wanted to show a lesson. And so this time, he, call, he said, he, he called on Philip. Philip failed. He said, okay, search among the crowd. And see, hallelujah, what you could find. And so the crowd was unprepared. Because they didn't bring any lunch. But there is one little boy. There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves. Amen. Five barley loaves. I did some research into these barley loaves. Because I'm thinking about maybe a roll, a dinner roll. But it wasn't even a dinner roll. These were crackers. Excelsior cream crackers. Rich crackers. They were made with barley grain. It was for a lad. Not an adult. A young, young lad. So that's a child's lunch. And two fish. These were fishermen. 
The people lived off the fish. They lived off the land. Hallelujah. But Jesus took the, what they had. He took their, they were from humble beginnings, humble circumstances. It doesn't matter what you, Lord Jesus, you don't have to have a lot. Somebody says, little is much when God is in it. Hallelujah. Little is much when God blesses it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. It doesn't matter how many days they tell you you have. It doesn't matter, glory to God, what your bank account says. If God says it's time to move, then you shall move. Hallelujah. The, the, the numbers don't have to add up for God to work. All it takes is faith in God. All it takes is belief in God. The man said, Lord, I believe. But help thou my unbelief. God, I have some faith. But mingle with that faith, God, is some doubt. But in the name of Jesus, take the doubt away and give me pure faith. Help my unbelief. And so Jesus, they said, Lord, all we have here is a little boy's lunch. Amen. Amen. Lord, we have here is a little boy's lunch. But listen to the next failure. What are they among so many? And so even the disciples who should have believed in Jesus, doubt infiltrated the ranks. Philip didn't believe. Andrew didn't believe. But Jesus was about to make believers out of them. Hallelujah. John says all these things are written that you might believe. Amen. So he's working on our faith even today that we can believe. There are Christians who have been serving God for years and, and still don't believe. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. They, they, they're like the man who said, Jesus, my disciples have tried. If it is possible, have compassion on my son. Lord, the disciples fail. I've been trusting you for years. If you can do it, if I can do it, is there anything too hard for God? Jeremiah says there is nothing that is too hard for God. You pose a problem and God has a solution. You pose a question and Jesus has the answer. You pose a dilemma. A dilemma is when you are faced with two decisions and you're not sure which way to go. You put that dilemma before God and watch God give you pure, clear instructions as to where to go. Gideon said, God, should I fight or should I not fight? Show me a sign. Hallelujah. Did God show him a sign? Yes, he did. We need to be able, we need to trust God. Lord, I've been trying to serve you for years and I can't serve you. You don't try to serve God. You just serve God. Lord, I've been trying to be a Christian. Oh, you don't try to be a Christian. You surrender to God. When you surrender to God, then he will come in and he will give you what it takes to live a Christian life. He will help you to live a holy life because God is holy. And somehow the church seems to have forgotten that God is holy. He is holy. He never changes. He's still the same. Yes, he was holy and he's still holy. He will forever be holy. Hallelujah. What is this? How can this feed so many people? But Jesus said, make the men sit down. You see, in the business of God, there is order. God is not the author of confusion. He said, make the men sit down. And it's amazing how when Jesus speaks, people listen. Today you have crowds and you have a hard time controlling the crowd. Hallelujah. The police can't control the crowd. 
you have to use tear gas sometimes to control. But Jesus said, make the men sit down and everybody sit down. They sat on the grass. Mark tells us that they sat in groups of 50 and groups of 100. You see, I tell you, all the gospel writers give us a sketch of this miracle and everybody add a little piece to it. Because when you put all of them together, you get a complete picture of what Jesus Christ is doing. And this is why it is so important that we study the word of God. Read the Bible. Spend time in the word of God. Are you with me? Hallelujah. We live in a culture now. Every time we go somewhere and sit down, the first thing we take out is our cell phone. What would happen if we would take out the Bible? Oh, watch it, Pastor. Watch it. You on the ear now? So the Bible <laughs> let them sit down in groups of 50. There was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, and the number was about 5,000. You see the compassion in God? You see, they were with him for a long time. They were tired, and so he says, rest your feet. He took them to an area where there was grass to cushion their body. And then he took the loaves. Amen? And all he did was he gave thanks. There was no abacadabra. <laughs> there was no lightning. There was no thunder. There was no mayhem. All he did was give thanks. Are you with me, church? Sometimes we are in a situation where the ends don't seem to meet. And instead of saying, God, you don't see the end can't meet, give God thanks. Lord, I thank you for what I have. I thank you for what you have provided. God, I thank you for the blessing that you have bestowed upon me. Lord, I'm not looking for tomorrow, but I'm thanking you for today. You see, God is looking for people who are grateful for what he's doing. Lord, we focus so much on what we don't have that we lose sight of what God has blessed us with. Lord, I don't have a million dollars, but you have good health. Oh, glory to God. Lord, my house is not as big as the Jones is. Oh, but my roof is not leaking. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't drive a Lexus. I don't drive, hallelujah, a Lamborghini. Oh, but my Toyota is not leaving me on the highway. Am I talking to somebody? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give God thanks for what you have. Lord, I'm not making six figures, but I'm making five. And I thank you. Hallelujah. Give thanks for what you have. Jesus didn't say, God, I have one boy's lunch. But what is this among the crowd? Oh, he said, Lord, thank you for this boy's lunch. I can't tell you how it happened. I can't tell you what he did. Because if I could tell you, then it wouldn't be a miracle. All I can tell you is, when he gave thanks, he started to distribute. And he started to distribute. Come on, Sister Brown. And he started to distribute. And he started to distribute. And everybody who, who was there, they had food to eat. And it wasn't just food to eat, but they were full. Come on, somebody. There was no room left for dessert because Jesus was able to fulfill their desire. He, everybody was well fed. Amen. Everybody had enough. I told you what Paul says. He's able to do above and beyond what we could ever ask or imagine. Are you with me? Deacon Ray, everybody was full. You and I know that when we go to a setting and we eat and we're full, we start to think about a take-home bag. Oh, glory to God. We start to think about, we're going to put away something for tomorrow. And so when they were full, 
And everybody had enough. I can imagine not only were their stomachs full, but their take-home packages were full. And then Jesus told the disciples, gather up the fragments. And then when they gather up the fragments, it was enough, hallelujah, to fill 12 baskets. Hallelujah. Why 12 baskets? Why not 10 baskets? Why not 3 baskets? Why not 4 baskets? But 12 baskets. You see, there were 12 disciples. Jesus was showing them that he has enough power to provide not just what they need, but to provide above what you could ever ask or imagine. You see, when God provides for his children, he just doesn't give you enough, but he gives you more than enough. I hear somebody say, Jehovah Jireh, he is more than enough for me. He's not just enough, but he is more than enough. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say, we are sin abound. Grace did much more abound. That means there is more grace to overflow. Lord, grace is overflowing. And you and I may think that sin is overrunning the earth. But guess what? There is more grace, hallelujah, than sin. Somebody said the world is out of control. Out of whose control? Because my God is still at the helm. My God is still controlling. The he is still in control. God is at work. To accomplish his purpose. But the, the point is, what is God's purpose? What is God doing? And if you don't know what God is doing, you are going to be misguided. You are going to be misled. You are going to think that things are out of whack. It may be out of whack with man. But God is in control. Are you with me? And so Jesus, he created, well, I'm just saying this right now. I believe he created some new bread. Are you with me? I believe he created some new bread. Some bread, hallelujah, some new biscuits that did not go through any process. Didn't come from any grain from the ground. I believe that the, 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 the biscuit that he created tasted better than the biscuit that the boy had. Am I talking to the church? You see, when he created the wine, when he gave them the new wine, they said to the host, why you save the best wine for last? Because this wine don't taste like anything that comes from earth. This coming like heavenly wine because it had a different taste. Let me tell you something. When he gave them the fish, those fish didn't have any mama or papa fish. That was an original fish that Jesus created. When God provides for you, hallelujah, it is the best because God wants the best for his children. Hallelujah. Don't you ever think that what God, the plan that God has for you is to give you the what left. But God wants his children to have the best. God wants his children to look the best. God wants when you stand up, he can say, have you considered my servant? Have you looked at my servant? And you better believe it. Satan is looking at you. Because the moment you are under the anointing of God, Satan begins to look at you. The enemy begins to conspire against you. You see, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you look like. When you are under the anointing of God, God's glory shines through you and you become a target for the enemy. What are you talking about, pastor? Well, ask Joseph when he went down to Egypt. You see, Joseph was Hebrew. There was racial tension. He was a slave. But when God's anointing shine on the young man, when God's glory begins to shine on that Hebrew skin, when the olive oil run down his arms and put all oh, glory to God, Satan saw her, saw him. She began to desire him because Satan wanted to thwart God's plan. I'm here to tell you that if Satan can get you to bow, he can try to stop God's plan. Oh, but in the name of Jesus, 
we will overcome because greater is he that is in you. Hallelujah. Every time God, Satan, gets you to bow to his direction, he is trying to change God's plan. But I'm here to tell you that you're a royal priesthood. You're a chosen nation. Satan wouldn't see you if God's glory wasn't all over you. So when you became to shine for God, you become a target for the enemy. But I'm here to tell you that you are more than conqueror through Jesus Christ. What you are going through is not an accident. This is orchestrated by hell to stop God's plan. But we will come through because God is on our side. We are serving an incredible God. And he deserves an incredible praise. Hallelujah. Where you are today, it doesn't matter what the enemy is doing. It's not by accident. But God has a path for your life. Stand where God has called you to stand and give God the praise. Hallelujah. Give God the praise because he is worthy to be praised. And so where there was no bread, there became an abundance of bread. Because Jesus provided for their need. And I want you to know something about this miracle. You see, I tell you, the miracle was a setup for a sermon. Hallelujah. So when they were full, Jesus tells them, he said, listen, you just done ate the bread. Well, guess what? In St. John 6 and verse 48, he says, I am the living bread. Hallelujah. You just ate glory to God. You just ate, hallelujah, some regular bread. But I am that living bread. I am the bread of life. I am the bread that will give you eternal life. Every time you eat his body and drink his blood, you are celebrating Jesus. You see, it is not just a ritualistic practice for us, but every time we partake, it's a new experience. It's seeing Jesus in a new way, dying for our sins. Don't you take it for granted, but understand the love, hallelujah, the sacrifice that went through his mind, his body, that caused him to do what he did so you and I can be saved. Never, 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 never neglect an opportunity to rejoice in this full and free salvation because this is a, is a blessing. Am I talking to the church? This is a blessing. It's a time to rejoice and tell God thank you for what you have done. Jump to the next verse for me, Deke. You're doing a good job. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am that bread of life. Is that right? Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Amen. This is the bread which came, which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. Amen. The next verse, brother. Yes, I am the living bread. Amen. You see, we have the Bible, and we say the Bible is the word of God. Am I right? But Jesus says, I am the word. So we have the written word, and then we have the living word. We have regular bread, but then we have the living bread. I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. He says, if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. What is he talking about? He's talking about eternal life. Amen. When you eat of that bread, he said, you will have eternal life. He said, the bread that I will give you is my flesh. Yeah? The bread which I, that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. You see, he laid down his life so that the world can be saved. Amen. And so today we have hope in Jesus. We have hope the same way he provided for that 5,000 hungry souls. He is providing for the world the living bread. The sea is the source of eternal life. 
Your eternal life rests in Jesus and Jesus alone. No, not Jesus and somebody else, but Jesus and Jesus alone. You hear him saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It is Jesus. Amen? Can we do the next verse? Hallelujah. That's it? <laughs> Amen. I know there was something more. He said, the Jews therefore strove among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? They misunderstood the message. Sometimes it, as pastors we preach, and sometimes when we finish preaching, some folks get mad because they misunderstand what the preacher said. And you think that they would come afterwards and say, Pastor, you said this. What do you mean? Because those guys, if they had gone to him and said, Lord, explain what you mean, they would have had a chance. But what they did was, they said, this is a rough saying. We don't eat men's flesh. The law forbids it. And so what they did was, they walked away. Did Jesus call them back? He looked at the 12. He said, will he also go? And then my brother Peter, he says, to whom shall we go? You have the gift of eternal life. And we believe that you are the Christ. Church, he says, unless you eat my body and drink my blood. So what is he saying? When we take the Lord's Supper, the bread that we eat, it's identified with the body of Christ. The wine that we drink. And we say wine, and I use that, we use that word wine loosely because it is not fermented. There's no alcohol in there. So don't think that is wine from the store. This is unfermented, and, and, and it signifies, it represents the blood of Jesus Christ. And he says, if unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. But he said, if you do, I will raise you up at the last day. And that's the goal of my life, to experience the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The same way he was raised from the dead, I want to have that resurrection. And so when we look at what he did and what he provided and what he facilitated for us, it comes in a package. And he said, if you do this, this will be the result. If you don't do it, and this is where we mess up. I'm finished now. We want to do what we want to do and expect for God to do what he says he will do. That's not how it works. When you do what he says, then he will do what he says he will do. And then we will have the joy of his salvation. Come on and stand to your feet and give God a praise. Put your hands together and tell him, thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on and tell the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Come on and tell him, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your miracles. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your deliverance. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Oftentimes when we think about miracle, we think about healing. But that's not the only miracle. Good health. Strength. Hallelujah. That's God's healing. And I believe there is something called preventative healing. Where God covers us. He told his people the diseases that affected Egypt will not affect you. Because you are under his blood. God bless you. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this opportunity to share your word. We thank you, Lord God, for making it possible that we could share your word in this fashion. Father, we pray this morning for those lives who are, that are not saved. 
If there is any one Lord God under the sound of my voice this morning who's not yet accepted you as Lord and Savior, I pray that this very moment, Lord, that they would lift their eyes towards you and say, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Come into my heart and save me. Your coming, Lord, is at hand. And so we pray in the name of Jesus that you would strengthen your believers, strengthen your followers, strengthen your disciples. For those who are backslidden, bring them back to the cross. For those who don't know you, hallelujah, grant them repentance. Save them, Jesus, before it is too late. For those who are sick, we pray that you would work a divine miracle in their bodies. That your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. This time we're going to go into our Lord's Supper. Those of you who are here and are partaking, Praise God, you may be seated. And those who are at home, we invite you, if you have the emblems, feel free to join us. And even if you don't have the emblems, you can still worship with us in this aspect of the service. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. Hast thou this bread, the loaves beside the sea? Beyond the sacred page, I seek thee, Lord. Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord. Is he worthy? Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We thank God for his father was so good. So solid. So meaningful. Thank God for his privilege. Hallelujah. The night he was betrayed, he took the bread. And after he had given thanks, he gave it unto his disciples, saying, This is my body that is broken for you. As often as you eat, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Eat ye all of it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. According to thy gracious word in me you me After the same manner, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it unto his disciples, saying, This is the New Testament in my blood that is shed for you. As often as you drink, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Drink ye all of it.
que uno ha tenido. Aleluya. Pray God, remember thee and all thy pain and all thy love to me. I turn my eyes when to the cross I turn my eyes and rest on Calvary. I turn mine eyes when to the cross I, I turn and rest on Calvary. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Oh, your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lamb of God. We remember, Lord. We My remember, sacrifice. Lord. Yes, Lord. I must. Thank you, Jesus. I must remember thee. When to the cross I turn mine eyes. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. And rest on Calvary. Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, Lamb of God. 
Oh, Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God. My sacrifice. Yes, Lord, you did it all for us. Hallelujah. Bless Hallelujah. your holy name. At the cross. Thank at you, the Jesus. cross. Thank you. Jesus. Where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart. Thank you, Lord. Rolled away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was there by faith. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. And now, now, I'm happy all the day. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for that old rugged cross. Fire. One day, we will exchange it for a crown. One day, Jesus. One day, one day, Lord. One day. We will exchange it for a crown. Come on and just tell him thank you. Thank you, morning. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and tell him thank, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Open Praise your mouth you, and just Lord. tell him thank Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I know this morning that we may be going through different things. Different things, but this morning our God is worthy. Yes, he is. Yes. He this is. morning he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be exalted. Yes, Lord. He's worthy to be lifted up. Yeah, Lord. And so the word of God said, Let everything that hath breath. Praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath. Praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath. Praise the Lord. Oh, we bless you. Thank God, Jesus. Name. Yes, Lord. We bless your holy name. Glory to God. Glory to God. And we tell God. you thanks. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just lift your right hands. Hallelujah, glory Jesus. Glory to God. And yeah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you. And when these failing lips grow dumb, and when these failing lips grow dumb. And mind and memory flee. And mind and memory flee. When thou shalt in thy kingdom come. When thou shalt in thy kingdom come. Jesus. 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 Remember me. Remember me, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace both now and forevermore. Praise, Praise ye the, the Lord. Lord. Praise, Praise God. God. At this time, we say goodbye to our Facebook audience. And all of those who are wa watching us online, may God bless you as we keep praying for you that God would give you the strength that you need because we are on our way to Canaan's land. Yeah. Where the soul of a man never will never die. Never God bless die. you. See, See you again Jesus next week name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise Praise God. Come on and give God.